Okay, so welcome back. This is the last uh, uh, video for week three, which is focused on looking at the Indian rules of waste man of plastic waste management, and also the global rules and regulations. And we have been trying to discuss the rule, critique the rules, uh, and then we'll uh, we have done that for Indian rules. We spent quite a b amount of time on that. So we'll continue with uh, the global rules, which we just introduced towards the end of the last uh, video. We talked about uh, United Nations, we talked about UK, we were discussing the UK stuff. So let's continue the, the same discussion and then we'll look at several other countries. So, uh, in, and then it will be in summary, if you are interested, of course, you can look for more details. We will try to put some documents, uh, we, we will actually put some documents uh, as a week uh, three reading material, which will have the, not only the waste management rules of India, but the uh, waste management rules and other documents, relevant documents related to the rules and regulations from other parts of the world. So you will get, a, if you are interested, uh, you can, uh, especially those of you who are uh, law background or has a interest in policy side, uh, for them it will be helpful to look at uh, the rules and regulations of other countries as well. So, with continuation of uh, this week, as we just said, we will be talking about the rules in India, which we have already done. We started doing the global rules as well. So, let us continue that uh, discussion of the second bullet, which shows up here. So, we are looking at UK uh, uh, in terms of the rules and regulations of UK. So, continuing with that, uh, now uh, there, are, there are certain in, in, in initiatives that have been taken by the government side. But at the same time, as you will see in this particular video, I also use several examples from around the world, where several initiatives have also been taken on a voluntary basis by the manufacturers, by the producers, and also in some places, uh, your um, uh, even retailers, uh, big mall owners, and uh, a several, uh, uh, like if, for example, in, we have presently, even at IIT Kharagpur, we are trying to not use plastic as much as possible. If you go to our market, if you are visiting our campus, you will see several banners say no to plastic. So there are certain and that's, that's we do not, like West Bengal does not ban plastic yet. So, a single use plastic, there is not, no ban in West Bengal as of today, but the IIT Kharagpur community decided to do that and go ahead and doing it. Of course, there are challenges in implementation, which, but there are some, of course, we will make some at least positive impact on uh, single use plastic uh, uh, material, which is, uh, we, which we are trying to reduce the usage on campus. So, sim so those we will discuss that, you will see a lot of global uh, uh, angle there as well. So, UK, uh, they found that uh, uh, UK supermarkets and food companies, they put a voluntary pledge to cut plastic packaging uh, as ministers uh, were trying to, uh, this is because the ministers were also in, the, the government wanted them to do it. And, uh, and the public that does not want to see the huge volume of plastic rubbish because there is a lot of uh, uh, discussion going around with plastic or planet, uh, National Geographic is also involved, which we, I mentioned to you that we will be doing some work with them very soon in terms of plastic going to River Ganga. So, there are, uh, so with the lot of uh, public uh, kind of uh, build up among the public community uh, that we should not use plastic, it is not good for our health, it is not good for our food and other stuff. So, it, it forces the companies to take some action. So, they took uh, some action where they were trying to uh, reduce the packaging uh, material in the plastic. So, industries uh, act, the minister uh, is making a statement here saying that industry action can prevent excess plastic reaching our supermarket self in the first place. So, and uh, he was happy that many businesses sign up. So, hopefully things will improve. Uh, but there are of course, you have to, the, for everything there are pros and cons and critiques and you have to look at from a critical point of view. Uh, as an unbiased assessment. So, there is also a another side of the argument which they say that uh, 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 retailers can pick and choose whether to sign a plastic act, a series of pledges that have no enforcement mechanism. It is a pledge. So, whether I am, uh, if I do not follow that pledge, I am not being penalized for it. So, sometimes if you are too much stressed out, you will probably not follow the pledge because it is not, it is not the rule which is not enforced. There is no penalty associated with that. So, the pledge fails to commit to removing all single use plastic and uh, they are only looking at uh, problematic or unnecessary single use plastic by 2025. So, it is a uh, probably it is uh, uh, a step which 
in a positive way but again a lot of things needs to be done a lot of things are desired so it's kind of uh, you have to look at from both uh, perspective going to us uh, there are certain certain states in us especially the new england states and uh, and some uh, progressive cities like San Francisco, they have banned uh, uh, mandatory use of recyclables or compostable checkout bags. So they have uh, they have been doing it for almost seven, eight years now. Because I remember uh, when I was in San Francisco, uh, maybe more than five years ago now, uh, they were I could not there were no plastic bags in many of the grocery stores. They will give you paper bag, compostable paper bags, which you can use or you can bag, you can bring your own bag. So that's. Uh, in many places in uh, in the western world now uh, in uh, say part of us which progressive states progressive cities in us and all as well as uh, in european union you will find carrying your own bag is actually a cool thing to do which was uh, uh, which is becoming a cool thing again in india because uh, they are doing it so we do it we try to follow them we try to copy them many times but they try to copy our old practices so east is trying to move copying the west and west is copying the older east so <laughs> the cycle continues so anything which goes out of fashion today save it i mean 20 years from now you may be able to use the same uh, pair of your goggles because uh, it will again come back in fashion so uh, plastic bag bag reduction and ordinance was passed in san francisco uh, i think nearly uh, almost maybe 7 8 uh, more than around 2012 or before that so it's uh, there the all stores will provide only the following a checkout bags recyclable paper bag compostable plastic bags or reusable bag violation has will penalties uh, nothing uh, uh, from uh, they can make a re reusable bag available for sale to the customers so rather than uh, giving them so beginning yeah that was in 2012 so beginning no stores that it's a provide uh, uh, no stores will provide a recyclable paper bag or reusable bag to a customer at the point of sale unless the store charges the customer a bag of 10 cents per bag so just to have a uniformity so that one one cust one uh, store is not charging other store is charging then it becomes a uh, competition is unfair so just to have like you have to pay 10 cents per bag so that's uh, uh, that will deter people that will ask uh, force people to like a at least some people will bring their own bag rather than uh, spend those 10 cents if, especially if you go to the market and you need eight or ten bags because you bought a lot of stuff that's almost close to a dollar so why you will do that you can get a coffee in a dollar so beginning october one uh, no store including food establishments shall provide a compostable plastic bag unless they charge a 10 cents so required to charge as customers a checkout bag charge for bag provided for customers leftover food or sit down restaurant dining so you, if you are if it's a part of the food you don't have to do it and then see the penalties again we don't have to read everything a fine uh, for hundred dollars for the first violation two hundred dollars for the second violation within the same year five hundred dollars for each additional violation within the same years so it's a strict enforcement so whenever there is an ordinance or the rule or a regulation coming out if the enforcement part is not proper so if it, those 100 200 500 does happen in san francisco but we have numbers we will have those very uh, good numbers of fine and everything in india but that doesn't really get implemented so that's where the problem is we have to have a proper implementation but again as you can see here they are talking about they made those paper bag available they make those uh, re reusable bag available they made those uh, uh, compostable bag available uh, then only they are asking people to uh, you follow the rule so you have to give them alternatives so if you don't give them alternatives and just come up with a rule that rule is bound to fail because if there is no alternative what the people will do they have to use that the other day I was in a market in a in a shop and uh, for a, that uh, with uh, jalebi. Those of you who know jalebi and uh, and pakoras and all. And if that jalebi is put in a uh, paper bag, it it becomes soggy very quickly. So if it's in a because it needs to be an airtight uh, place, so they put uh, in a plastic bag and just put a seal on it, uh, just uh, tie the note on it, and it remains fresh for a longer period of time. So what that soap owner will do if he doesn't have a other alternative to have uh, this those bags which can he which he or she can use in place of that plastic bag of uh, because the customer will not like uh, soggy stuff so he has to sell his product so he 
so then he it there has to be an alternative available which is comparable price which is in a competitive price then only people will be easily able to see move and if then people doesn't move put all these fines and enforce it that's how they did it in san francisco so we we most of the times we do half baked stuff in india that's where the problem is we need to take uh, the full picture and the government cannot just leave everything to the private parties the government has to the government also has to take a lot of uh, action on its own had has to make a lot of things happens on its own government offices actually has to really uh, get gear up and do lot of things uh, because that they, they are the only offices which can put all these stakeholders together other office other uh, stakeholders doesn't have that uh, capability i can say or maybe the say because who will listen if the government says people will listen other people other company says people may not listen they will say that they maybe have a certain business motive behind it so that's what uh, we need to kind of grow that culture that's where uh, our uh, waste management in general uh, fails in this country because we don't have that culture so uh, then again uh, the penalties are also there even amount uh, in the event that city adopts an ordinance creating a procedure to review administrative penalty uh, based on california government code city may impose administrative penalties for violation again the same thing uh, if charged in uh, this is uh, 100 200 and 500 city attorney may seek legal impunity or other equitable relief to enforce this ordinance including uh, without limitation civil penalties then 200 for first violation 400 for second violation 600 for each subsequent violation in a given year so that's a hefty fine 400 like 200 dollars you can probably on a if you get a good deal you can probably buy a mini ipad in 250 around 200 to 250 dollars 500 dollars will buy you a decent laptop actually and then if that's the, that's the amount of uh, a pretty decent laptop like $500 will buy you that's close to as of indian rupees today that's closer we are all, we are looking at closer to sometimes something between 35000 to 40000 indian rupees so that's a lot of money and that can uh, uh, buy a pretty decent laptop to you so so that's this kind of the level of fine is there so and it's in sports that's the if it's enforced people will follow it but of course you have to give them the option uh the options has to be there south korea uh, they have a korea zero waste uh, movement network uh, leading to nation wide campaign against single use plastic disposable cups straws and all that there are a lot of voluntary agreements uh, with, with the larger scale small scale grocery stores encourage all actors like break free from plastic and all those kind of stuff in august 2018 the korean government introduced a stricter regulation on single use plastic item which is a ban on plastic cups and umbrella covers at government offices a ban on plastic uh, this umbrella covers actually some of you may be familiar with that some of you may not be but umbrella covers are usually provided at uh, as like it's a thin plastic again uh, provided at the government offices in many countries where if you are coming with a rain because your water will drip all along in the office corridor from your umbrella so you can put your in that plastic bag and carry it with that so it doesn't drip along inside the offices so but they have banned that on a umbrella cover so it may be then they have to have some different umbrella covers because that is also needed otherwise that's becomes a problem in terms of water on on uh, inside the office people may slip and uh, those kind of issues are there ban on plastic bag at grocery store new fine for the use of plastic cup at coffee shops and fast food restaurants so again they they have to provide the alternatives associated with that japan container and packaging act this came long back almost uh, it's uh, close to now what 18 plus 5 23 years ago so japan uh, they were were looking at uh, packaging and containers and packaging recycling act they have to sort all the waste and uh, start to recycle as much as possible uh, that's it adopted the concept of extended producer responsibility for the first time in japan so japan was talking about epr 23 years ago and uh, many other countries european union and other countries have started uh, after that and uh, of course in this kind of concept from a implementation point of view is still in a very nascent stage in india we are just talking about it not much implementation is happening so in terms of japan act uh, you have to sort disposal consumers will bring uh, the waste in a sorted waste and uh, you dump it sorted collection for use container municipality will take that waste after sorting it it goes for competitive bidding 
goes to recycling manufacturing site. Here we you have designated uh, uh, Japan Container Packaging Recycling Association, payment of recycling cost, payment of recycling cost to fulfill every location. There are specified business operators uh, for plastic container manufacture, for food manufacture and then it kind of goes back the circle continues in terms of recycling of uh, plastic and other recyclables. Uh, recently, uh, last around six months back, uh, Japan uh, seven months back introduced the looking at uh, the micro beads, microplastics getting into the ocean. Uh, so they were they were banning it. Uh, they were looking at passes anti-plastic law. Uh, they were trying to get rid of that uh, unanimous approval to seek the encourage business to reduce the use of microplastics, including micro beads. Those are tiny plastic particle used in creams uh, like your uh, you when you use uh, scrubbers and other cosmetic products. Uh, but there is no punishment uh, right now. So, it is just a probably the first uh, step and the world leaders have voiced concern and five countries of the group of seven meeting in Canada signed up a new charter to say limit plastic pollution. Canada as we will talk about in a later time has a huge coastline and uh, water uh, those beaches are very, very important for Canadian economy. So, they, uh, they need to keep it clean, those waters need to be clean. Um, Japan along with US did not sign up the charter which aims to bring uh, the increase which among other things was to increase plastic recycling. So, that was a little bit drawback on Japanese side, uh, not know why, why they ended up doing that because Japan is known for better environmental practices. So, but sometimes the politics uh, kind of overtakes. Uh, so, that could be something along that line. Japan industry started taking measure to address concern of microplastic. Uh, so, there are the new laws also is there. So, there are some initiatives there. So, others uh, if you can go online and start looking at you will find from Brazil, Belgium, Dominican Republic, Panama, Philippines, every country is looking at plastic today. And so, plastic waste is a huge uh, like it is a big, big uh, topic as of now that is the reason why this course. So, that I thought that I will put uh, again as I said in the very beginning of the course, I am a, I am a student of this course as much as you are. So, I am what we are doing from here is we are trying to get the information collected as much as possible, put it together in a critical way, discuss it in these videos and present to you uh, based on uh, my expertise of uh, working in this field on, on different waste stream for nearly two decades now. So, I can put uh, like I can compare contrast which, which uh, probably uh, since I have the background to do that, but at the same time I am also learning, I am also learning a lot of new stuff. So, I is again I request all of you that if you find any new information which we could not cover in this course, do put it in the discussion forum for the interest of everyone including me, so that it will help us to learn more. It is a evolving topic, lot of things are happening, it is highly dynamic. Every day if I go or just do a Google search for a news and other stuff, I find at least 8 or 10 uh, articles, uh, good articles related to plastics from different places in the world. So, it is not possible to cover everything in one course. So, but this is just a seed, it is a seed which is trying to put a perspective. So, that once you take this course, uh, whoever is interested in working in this area you can you should get a you get a baseline now you get a baseline and you can go further from here so that's the whole purpose of offering this course and again this kind of course you have to have a lifelong learner it's not possible lifelong learning is what is needed today because uh, uh, degrees are okay but degrees are not uh, that relevant in the job market to, you need to have a skills and to have to develop the new skill you need to be a lifelong learner so, coming back here, so as you can as, as uh, this slide is showing you this uh, that there is a lot of work is going on in different countries, Belgium, Brazil, Dominican Republic, they are coming up with their plan. Canada, which just I referred to a few minutes back, which is the world's largest uh, coastline and they are funding a lot of uh, community based program, the beach cleanups uh, and uh, critical out research, they are also looking at critical research in the impact of microplastics. This microplastics are dangerous. Uh, it is when it's, it's, it's a concern for the environment because they are getting into the fish, they are getting into even our salt. There are uh, uh, an IIT Bombay pro, a, a study was done where the Indian uh, the salts that are most of the major brands of salt uh, that uh, sold in Indian market. They took that and they analyzed it for microplastics and they found in many of them microplastics traces of microplastic there. 
So this is coming into our salt. So salt is used in pretty much every day in the food, and uh, so you, it may it will get into our body too, which is not good. So they are looking at uh, it. Also draws up regulation to manufacture and sell of toiletries uh, containing microbeads. So that's. Uh, it's a, that's a Canadian uh, initiative is going on. Indonesia is uh, goal is to reduce 70 percent by 2030. So reduce the plastic waste. Kenya, Jordan, Madagascar, Chile, France are banned or placed to ban single use plastic or non biodegradable plastic bags. Denmark, France, Ireland, Netherlands already have a, a rule since 2011, uh, 2011, 2012. And look uh, and consumption to reduce the consumption of the carrier bags, and uh, those countries consumed fewer bags than the average because these countries are a bit environmentally more cautious. The people in general are aware of the environmental issues. Uh, literacy rate is also pretty high in compared to if you take the world average. So they they have a practice. They have a habit of uh, doing uh, things in that that way. So it's they they are, they are using much less plastic. They're generating much less plastic compared to other parts of the world. Israel, another big, uh, not not a big country from a size, but uh, pretty much big country in terms of the world power and the in terms of the technology, in terms of technology uh, that they use for different stuff. And uh, Israel tries to have 70 percent of his beaches clean, and 70 percent of the time of this year, ban on certain types of plastic ba bag. Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Sweden are implementing the Nordic program. Those are called Nordic countries on a sustainable approach to plastic by preventing plastic waste, encouraging recycling, and promoting a circular economy. Circular economy is where you take the, you try to bring it back. So it's like a circle. So that's why it's a circle. Right now, the most of the economy is linear. So we try to go from linear economy to circular economy. And uh, New Zealand, again, uh, they have a lot of tourism, they want to keep everything clean. So, they have banned products containing plastic microbeads uh, from June of last year and is developing options to get rid of single use plastic bags. So, New Zealand is, uh, has banned the products containing plastic uh, microbeads from June of 2018 and is developing options to get rid of single use plastic bags. So, that is uh, another uh, uh, example. EU member states uh, policy, they have a policy uh, uh, in terms of limiting the consumption of a plastic bag. In uh, April 2015, European Parliament uh, passed uh, amending the packaging and uh, pack waste directive, reducing the consumption of lightweight plastic carrier bag, which are mostly single use ones. So, that is uh, that is there. Uh, just few months back, 2250 groups launched massive Go global plastic partnership. So, they have a 250 organizations responsible for 20 percent of the plastic packaging of the world. So, they got around and committed to reducing waste and pollution, so waste uh, and pollution from plastic. Uh, this initiative has been named as New Plastic Economy Global Commitment and includes diverse group of members including the city of Austin clothing company H&M, which is a big uh, chain in the US and I think I saw that in Australia too, uh, Unilever, PepsiCo, L'Oreal, Nestle, Coca-Cola. So, and then there are several other companies. So, these are the big, uh, big ones. So, this global commitment towards a high profile partnership, uh, it, uh, partner, it is partnership with United Nations uh, and also led by Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Uh, if you are, if those of you are not familiar with that, Google uh, Ellen MacArthur. And uh, this is that they are doing a lot of good stuff in terms of uh, uh, waste management, uh, environmental protection and also talking about the circular economy and all. Uh, Consumer Goods Forum and 40 academic institutions. So, they have a partnership with academic institution in terms of doing research and teaching. So, academic institutions are also academic uh, partnership is also very important which is one thing uh, we do not that much uh, our that, that culture is again missing in India. Uh, uh, academics, uh, institutions and industries interaction is very low compared to what is uh, I have seen abroad uh, doing my work uh, abroad, but unfortunately it, there is a mistrust on both sides. So, hopefully that uh, gradually it is getting better, but again it is pretty low in Indian uh, contest. So, being said that uh, we looked at uh, uh, plastic waste management rules of India. We also looked at uh, uh, plastic uh, uh, global plastic waste management rules. So, in terms of to summarize, if we want to summarize into what we have done in this particular week, uh, 
So, and also in a big picture, we all know that plastic are, they are, they are durable stuff. They are uh, durable, that's, that's the reason why they are used that much. And they are recyclables, many of the plastics are recyclable. So, all what we uh, need to ensure that uh, plastic uh, is reclaimed and reprocessed rather than irresponsibly discarded. And uh, as you look at any of this plastic bottle or plastic product, you will see a uh, triangle with a number in there. So, number 1, 2, 3, 4, they, they, they mean different type of plastic. So, most of the number 1 through 5, uh, they, are, is, they are recyclable. Uh, number 1 is PET, 2 is HDPE and then rest on and they are pretty much recyclables, technology is out there. So, they can be recycled, only thing is that we have to collect it properly and use it properly. Uh, waste management, uh, uh, proper waste management will be one of the major issue in terms of plastic is the marine litter, the plastic that is getting into our ocean. And that can happen even from the plastic that you and I are using at our home. If we do not manage in our municipality those plastic properly, it will get into the surface water. From surface water, from a stream, it will get go to your uh, river, from the river finally it will go to the ocean. And that is what is happening and by the time it reaches ocean and in the ocean it gets broken down into smaller pieces and it kind of becomes uh, those smaller pieces becomes more dangerous. So, that is uh, those things should be avoided. There is a need for more support and investment in the waste management infrastructure with a focus on Southeast Asia, especially in this part of the world. Our waste management system needs a lot of uh, focus. Um, and one of the thing is that if you really want to reduce the litter, uh, you have to do a lot of capacity building. We have, we have to have a lot of training programs for our municipal workers, a lot of uh, communication outreach uh, to people in general. And uh, as I, during my solid waste class, I have given that example that in uh, if you are in New Zealand, they will give you so much information regarding recycling of waste that within if you are st if you stay there for three four months, you will you will get it. You cannot really make a further mistake. It will be in the newspaper every Sunday with a big. Uh, in, in India, we usually will, will have a big product being sold, but there uh, at least one page just on how to sort the garbage and uh, many of the newspaper publish it for free for them actually. And, uh, and then uh, there will be booths at community events and other places, there will be a booth which will teach you how to sort the garbage. So, there are a lot of schools they give that information, on the TV, in between the TV program they give the information. So, you are getting the information and it is the same message, it is not, it's a, uh, especially if you have multiple message, confusing messages is not there. That messaging is also very, very important, you need to keep it. Uh, New Zealand is a small country, so they have, they can do that. Uh, in India, we have, we will win in a different language, but again, we have to make sure that the message is clear, is simple and easily understood and no ambiguity, so that people should not be able to interpret in a different way. Make it as simple, as clear as possible. Doing things simply, uh, making things simple is the most hardest thing to do. So, we, uh, that is, uh, you, you, you want to make it something very simple, that is one of the hardest thing and uh, which those of you who work in this, those uh, areas, you know that. Uh, government and industry has to start talking to each other, uh, like and there has to be a behavior change campaign, uh, look at the, improve the recycling infrastructure, develop a circular economy concept rather than in, in, uh, ensuring the plastic can be recycled as close to the generation point as possible. Because if you are taking the plastic waste, and taking it to several hundred kilometers, the amount of uh, the transportation fuel and other things that you will end up using, you may not be doing really good to the environment because uh, you, it will, uh, there will be an environmental footprint associated with that. Uh, shipping industries and the fishing industries should continue to work on minimize the waste entering the sea from the ships and shipping containers. So, that is uh, also important. And uh, overall, what we need is a more holistic approach in designing uh, our national strategy in terms of uh, uh, like a uh, implementation of the plastic waste management or in general the waste management. Different stakeholders needs to be brought in board where we talk to each other making a policy which cannot be implemented because we do not have the infrastructure. Coming up with a policy which our industry is not ready to adopt, it is not really going to solve the problem. When we want to solve the problem, we need to have a practical policy 
which should be discussed with all the stakeholders, including the industry partners, including those people who has to follow this policy. Uh, and then gradually you make it something simple and then add layer of complexities later on. Don't start with something very complex and which you cannot really implement. And then since you cannot implement, you already violated the rule. People think that, okay, I, I violated one rule now. If I violate 10 rule, how does it matter? So that uh, things has to be done. We have to look at the interdisciplinary sector. Uh, rather than having a blanket ban or a tax introduced without prior research, without having alternative, that is really not going to work. Consumer behavior and acceptance needs to be looked into a, a account in terms of plastic bag policy and that is the important issue for further research and other things as well. So, those of you who are interested from a policy perspective, there is a lot of work that can be done. Those of a background in law or management and other areas, those uh, even engineering students, uh, I would encourage them to look at that as well. From a policy point of view, this plastic waste management policy right now is, is itself is a hot uh, area to look at because uh, how different countries are looking at their policy and why the policies are different in different countries and what angle they are looking at, what are the pros and cons of different policies, what are the things that uh, other countries which are doing it better can be take, uh, we can adopt that in Indian context. So, and I said adopt, do not copy. <laughs> so, there is a different, you take it, but you have to make it from an Indian perspective. Uh, we can learn from others, but we just cannot uh, just copy uh, and because our situation is way different than what is there in the other countries. So, with that uh, we will be wrapping this uh, particular week. Uh, I hope uh, this is the end of the third week. So, we have five more weeks to go and we will, con uh, I hope you are enjoying the course. If you have any uh, feedback, any suggestions, feel free to put it on the discussion forum and we will be trying to uh, address those as much as possible. Again, uh, all the reading materials for, for the every week, we will we have several a set of reading materials, which is uh, there on the on, on uh, NPTEL platform. Uh, you have the details there. And as soon as uh, also the set of slides for each week is also available to you. So, slides, certain reading materials, background materials, rules and other stuff, which will be all weekly, we have a weekly uh, module for reading materials as well. So, you should refer to it and uh, look at the quiz, you already have done two quizzes, three quizzes if you have done the quiz 0 as well. So, this will be your now quiz 3 uh, and then so as you know every week we will have a quiz and then finally, we will have an exam. If you have not registered for an exam, you need to register if you want to get a certificate. So, with that uh, I would say thank you uh, for uh, uh, continuing with this course uh, and I hope you are enjoying it. Uh, we are trying our best to deliver the best content. Again, this is an evolving course, a lot of material is out there. There may be certain uh, aspect which we may miss because we can, uh, things are, as I said, things are evolving. Every day things are changing in this area. So, if there is anything new and interesting, share with us. Thank you.